A very good evening to all the participants. Uh, my name is Dr. Vignesh. I'm part of the National Digital Library of India team. Uh, we are one of the co-organizers and uh, a technical support partner for this uh, 25th PN Panikar National Reading and Digital Reading Month celebrations. Uh, along with uh, the Ministry of Education, Niti Ayok and Central Board of Secondary Education. And uh, we are very uh, pleased uh, to be, uh, uh, be a technical support partner as well as the co-organizer of this uh, webinar. As a part of uh, this uh, 25th uh, uh, PN Panikar uh, National Reading and Digital Reading Month celebrations, uh, we have been organizing a series of webinars. And today is the 14th uh, webinar in the series of webinars we have been organizing. And uh, today's topic uh, is very, uh, uh, very basic, but highly relevant for today's uh, uh, knowledge uh, society. The topic is on uh, copyright and knowledge access. And uh, what are the some emerging issues that are uh, being faced uh, by various stakeholders? And we have a very renowned, one of the international experts, I would say, Professor uh, Prabhutta Ganguly, who is the uh, co-principal investigator of the National Digital Library of India, IIT Karakpur. And uh, Professor Ganguly, I have uh, had the opportunity of listening to him at uh, various forums, uh, in uh, physical webinars, as well as in the virtual uh, meetings. He has been amazing. He is one of the brilliant uh, minds in the uh, copyrights and IPR uh, uh, domain. He has been consulted by various international institutions, uh, including the gate agreements, etc. And he is also advisor and uh, uh, visiting faculty in various institutions, including he is an advisor and adjunct faculty at uh, IIT Jodhpur. He is also an honorary visiting professor at the Jawaharlal Nehru University. He is also a prof emeritus prof professor at uh, Vishwakarma University. Apart from this, uh, he also uh, is the CEO of Vision IPR, uh, uh, an organization which is uh, a brainchild of uh, Professor Ganguly. And we are very pleased to have uh, Professor Ganguly with us today. And uh, due to some uh, unavoidable health reasons, uh, Balakopal ji could not uh, join this session. So he has requested uh, his apologies uh, to be conveyed to Professor Ganguly to all the participants. Uh, so with this uh, kind of introduction, I would uh, now request uh, Professor Ganguly to kindly uh, uh, start his uh, session. Uh, over to Professor Ganguly. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation, sir. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Vignesh. Um, mm -hmm. This is a continuation of a series of, um, of events that are being organized by the Panikar Foundation, and uh, I'm very pleased to be a part of this uh, for the second year in succession. Um, the topic I've chosen for today's presentation is copyright and knowledge access emerging issues. Now, why is this particular subject so important and so significant for um, for the public in you know at large, uh, in general, and particularly uh, for libraries, librarians, and institutions across the country and across the world. Now, uh, the first important aspect that we must uh, recognize that you know we have to look at it. Why all this is so important? We hear terms called knowledge society. We hear about terms, uh, you know, uh, about uh, terms which says access to information, access to knowledge. We uh, go and access information in different forms, in different parts of the, uh, in different books. We go into uh, digital, uh, you know, digital frameworks, the internet, et cetera, et cetera. So the question that comes in, is where is this linkage between copyright and knowledge access? So we like to look at some of these aspects and then try and see the correlation between them and see how do we navigate across these particular aspects as we go along. The very first uh, part is that we need to look at for where do we develop a perspective on this? 
We, I'm not going to go into the details of many of these international um, conventions or so, but, the, uh, but I'll just mention that you have the International Public on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, which came, which in, which came into force in 3rd January, 1976. Similarly, you have the other one, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, proclaimed by the United Nations General Assembly in Paris on 10 December 1948, and uh, with the General Assembly Resolution 217A. Then you also have the other one, which is United Nations Declaration on Rights of Indigenous Peoples, adopted on the 107th plenary meeting on 13 September 2007. Broadly, very broadly, without going into the exact wordings of these particular conventions, what do they convey? Basically, they convey that we have certain rights to education. We have the rights to enjoy the socio-cultural and other benefits from developments that take place around the world, not only in base of information, knowledge, scientific, and other cultural developments that take place. We also have the rights of indigenous people and so on and so forth. So right to education, right to knowledge, right to information is something which is very basic to the human uh, race. And these conventions or these uh, international declarations, et cetera, of the United Nations really highlight some of these particular features as we go along. Now, then we come to the most, you know, the latest uh, one from India, the National Education Policy 2020. And what does the National Education Policy 2020 talk about? It talks about an empowered knowledge society. Now, again, without going into the detailed aspects of the, you know, of this massive document, the National Education Policy 2020, which looks at the, it looks at a complete overhauling of the educational system in India. But as you look into the policy aspect, there are certain features which are of great significance, and it says it's going to use technology in a very big way. And so it says extensive use of technology in teaching, learning, removing language barriers, increasing access for Divyan students and education planning and management. Number one, the national repository of high quality resources of foundational literacy and numeracy will be made available in digital infrastructure for knowledge sharing, that is Diksha. D-I-K-S-H-A, Digital Infrastructure for Knowledge Sharing, Diksha. Access to downloadable, printable versions of all textbooks will be provided by all states, stroke UTs, uh, and NCRT to help conserve the environment and reduce logistical burden. Steps will be taken to enhance online accessibility of library books and further broad basing of digital libraries, creating a dedicated unit for building world-class digital infrastructure, educational digital content and capacity. And last but not least, ensuring equitable use of technology for content creation, for content creation, digital repository and dissemination. So, the question that comes in is to get all this in place. A very, very important aspect that we need to look at and very closely is what is the way in which copyright issues are going to interface with all these you know, aspects that we are talking about, making all this information and knowledge available at our doorsteps. So, so keeping this in mind, we need to look at these things in a very, very close manner. So, so as we go along, as we go along, we need to look at, therefore, 
what is copyright and to see what is copyright out there uh what is copyright so the first is let us look at what is copyrightable in india and what is copyrightable in india is only those created works that somewhat are somewhat different in character as compared to any existing works that on that involves some intellectual effort and involve a degree of creativity so the type of expressions what does copyright um, you know help to protect it helps to protect expressions it does not protect ideas it protects uh, it protects expressions out there so so we are talking about we are not talking about inventions we are talking about expressions how do we express ourselves for example this particular slide which you are seeing in front of you all the words all the you know words in this uh, uh, um, you know in this uh, the information in this slide is actually known but i have put it in my own way in this particular slide so this is my expression of these known things and therefore this is something which is a work which has been created by me the slide which is somewhat different in character to any of the existing slides when that involves a certain amount of intellectual effort and involves a certain degree of creativity in terms of color placement of these words etc etc and therefore because i have the copyright to this what does it entail me it entails me the right to reproduce the work in any material form the right to issue copies of the work to public right to perform this particular work in public as i'm giving this lecture just now right to communicate the work to public i'm communicating now to public right to make a cinematographic film or sound recording right to make a translation so if i want to translate this into various languages i have the right to do it copyright gives me the right to do that so if someone else wants to do it will have to come to me and take my permission right to make an adaptation of this particular work so all these rights come to me on this particular slide as a result of my uh, having created this particular work so that what copyright does so we need to ask a couple of questions before we go further so let's go ahead and therefore to get a copyright for any work like this particular slide you need the the work must have a sense of originality and the word original does not mean it's got to be invented but it was not be copied from somebody else and that i have created it using my own mind and this is an expression of my mind and one of the very um, significant aspects that we must remember that facts do not cannot be protected by copyright so facts are not protectable by copyright ideas are not protectable by copyright copyright is always linked to some commercial viability commercial consequences and implications and with copyright comes a very important right another right called moral right that remains with the author even after the copyright the economic right goes away and that's a significant one on which i will comment later so let me go ahead to the next part of this particular presentation and so what does copyright do it gives the right to stop others from exploiting the work without the consent or accent or sorry or uh, um, you know uh, as of the owner of the copyright a copyright law is expected to balance between the interest and rights of the author and the interest of the public and that is that is you're trying to protect the public domain or to claim co copyright and protect it under the copyright statute or the copyright law so therefore we need to ask ourselves a very uh, simple basic question does copyright become a barrier to sharing of knowledge or does copyright enable the sharing of knowledge we need to understand and ask this question not in a in an emotive fashion 
but in a very objective fashion as to whether copyright is an enabler or is copyright a barrier to knowledge transfer? Is copyright a barrier to knowledge access? Uh, knowledge access, or is copyright an enabler to knowledge access? So we need to understand and ask these questions and see how the world is going ahead in terms of copyright law. So that's what we need to answer and assess in this particular presentation. So there are four important features that we need to recognize that copyright, copyright is registered with the state. State means in our context in India, it is registered in India, okay? Uh, it's a national, it's a, it's, it's not by state, I don't mean Kerala or Maharashtra. State means our country, India. It is given by the government. So the four important uh, or relevant terms is number one, who owns the copyright? We need to ask that question and understand who owns the copyright, number one. Number two. So, yes, sorry, please. sir. I think there is a lot of bandwidth issue at your end. So maybe I think you can. Uh, I will. Uh, I will stop the video. Yes, sir. That would be good. Sir. Am I better now? Far better, sir. Far better. Okay, good. I stopped the video. Now, so the first part, as I was saying, was ownership of the work. Who owns the work? We need to understand that. The second part that we need to understand is, you know. What are those rights and where are those rights valid? The third, what where I'll spend quite some time is what are those type of situations where are there any exceptions to the copyright and the exceptions to copyright to that? And so that is exceptions to copyright. That is permitted use without prior consent of the copyright owner. And the fourth part, are, are there any obligations that the copyright owner has to ensure responsible use of the granted monopoly for societal good? So we'll have to see how these four points, how these four aspects, or how these four concepts get balanced in the use of copyright when we come to knowledge access and issues of knowledge access. So, so we will play with these four words as we go along and see how copyright balances these particular features. So let's go further. And so when we go to the next part, yeah. So there are two concepts again. One is when somebody uses my copyrighted work with my consent, then the person is prospecting my work. When the person is using the is using my operated work without my consent, without my consent, then the person is pirating the work unless unless that work or the the action the person is doing falls within the exceptions of the copyright law. So therefore, it becomes very important and significant to understand when we are doing something with a copyrighted work, whether it falls within the exception or it does not fall within the exception. If it falls within the exception, then I don't have to take permission of the copyright owner. If it does not fall, um, if it does fall within the exception, then I do not have to use the copyright owner's um, consent. The ownership of works and rights associated with that and the exceptions become the, the dominating factors that we need to work out as we go along. And I'll come to those features as we go through in the presentation. So, so the first part, that there is some work, there is some expression like I have put this part, these slides, the presentation I'm making is, a, is some work from my end. Now, you are going to access this particular work. When you access this work for purpose of re, what I call as repurposing, that means you want to reuse it, 
you want to revise it you want to remix it you want to retain it or you want to redistribute it if you want to do this then you have to assess find out that when you access this particular work and you want to reuse or you want to revise or you want to remix or you want to retain or you want to redistribute the question is do you need the consent of the copyright holder or you do not need the consent of the copyright holder that's the basic question that we will have to address and look at because we are looking at copyright now in this i want to bring in what has digital technology done to us and the internet done to us very you know as we go along we understand that you know with the digital in the digital media with all the digital technologies the innovation time scales have really collapsed easy and speedy transmission distribution reproduction and reworking of works has become so simple adaptations and recreations of works have become in simple storage there has been a prolific increase in storage capacity and access to information is almost any time and from anywhere now this is what the digital technology has done but let's go back in time in somewhere around 1490 or so for example when printing was invented by gutenberg what he did was completely different that brought in a complete transformation in reproduction of work to reproduce books so easily in printing and therefore right from the time of handwriting scripts etc to printing and now to digital technology and storage and other things the entire concepts have changed therefore the question we need to ask ourselves is do the present day ipr laws address the challenges of an you know evolving digital ecosystem now we will address some of these questions as we go along in light of this let us see why is copyright relevant in the context of information and knowledge management first let us look at organized systems like libraries archives museums who are custodians of diverse works that caters to information needs of consumers of copyright what do they do they procure copyrighted and non copyrighted works in various forms both in physical and digital and make them available to consumers by a plethora of services for example we are very clear that when we go to a standard library and we say can you get me such and such paper or a book which is not here what do they do they immediately find out from another library who has it and then they do a straight from this library to that library they do an interlibrary loan and get me the book question we need to ask is in the digital media which is so easy to do can they do it can they not do it what can they do what they cannot do we'll come to that part so also libraries archives and museums facilitate the creation of copyrighted and non copyrighted works they now libraries and information centers have become participants it's not just a storehouse of information so they become conduits for distribution of copyrighted non copyrighted works and they exploit diverse media for publishing so this is what the organized way of doing things but what happens when they are individuals individuals use for personal reading study research and collections teachers use the various types of works for teaching in the courses critics newspaper reporters use works for writing reviews criticism etc we take software the software is all protected by copyright and when we you know get the procured software legally through legal licenses can we make backups can we keep copies of that can i make a change to the software for my personal use i need to ask those questions can i use some of the work and presented in judicial proceedings etc etc and we need to ask many many such questions as we go along now having raised all these questions and points let's now dive deeper into the system and doing going deeper into the system therefore in legal terms 
what is an infringement? Infringement is violation of any of the rights. For example, when I photocopy a book, am I violating copyright? Answer is yes, I'm violating copyright. Copyright, photocopying a book violates right to reproduction. Scanning a book, scanning a book violates the right to reproduction. Sending a scan book through email violates um, right to circulation, etc. So we need to ask a question, when we are photocopying a book, when we are photocopying a book, when we are scanning a book, what is it I am doing for? Am I doing it for my personal use? Am I copying? What extent am I copying? What am I doing with it? Am I keeping it to myself? Am I sharing it with others? I need to ask all those questions. And therefore, one needs to examine whether, we need to examine whether there are exceptions in the copyright law to permit such, accept, such actions without the consent of the copyright holder. So first question, simple. How to escape infringement? Well, go the legal way. If you think that you are not within those exceptions, go and take a license. Then you are doing it well within and you are not infringing copyright. Or otherwise, you find out whether what you are doing falls within the exception of copyright law, generally terms are fair dealing or fair use in other, you know, in fair dealing in India, fair use in other countries, and then we will say that, well, I'm not infringing. Now, so let us go dive slightly deeper into the effective, how do we effectively exploit the exception in the Indian Copyright Act? Now, I won't go into the details of those, but just to take a few examples. For example, when I access a copyrighted material for personal use, or I want to write a review, I'm writing a thesis, I'm doing research, I'm writing a critique, I use it for various educational, in, you know, in, in various educational institutions, including use of works in a course, or I perform in a play or show film or a sound recording to a limited audience in an institution, not for commercial purposes, certain uses by government and public documents, news reporting, et cetera, et cetera, all these, or I go and take a photograph of Taj Mahal, which is in the public domain, art, you know, architectural works in public places and public uh, uh, places, you know, all those, those are not an infringement of copyright that's allowed under the exceptions or under section 52 of the Indian Copyright Act. It falls within the exceptions. Therefore, I do not have to go to a copyright uh, holder or the copyright owner to do all these particular activities. I, I want to make the copyrighted works available in special formats to persons with disabilities. I do not have to go to the copyright holder for permission. If for transient or incidental storage of the work, purely in technical process, so when you are accessing something and it just comes into your RAM and then you're doing it only for transient purposes, it is not an infringement of copyright, but you store it, then it will be. Now, all these are some examples of uh, exceptions that are there in the Copyright Act in India out there. I'm not going to go into details of it, but just to give you a flavor of what can be or what cannot be used. Now, coming specifically to libraries, it says storing the work in any medium by electronic means by non-commercial public library for preservation if the library already possesses a non-digital copy of the work. So in case the library has a physical copy, it scans that particular book or document, which is copyrighted and keeps it for preservation, then the library is well within the right to do it. It does not have to go to the copyright uh, owner to have a permission for doing this particular work, which is defined under this clause of section 52 of the Indian Copyright Act. Let's go and see another library exception. It says making not more than three copies of a book, including pamphlet, sheet of music, map, 
chart or plan by or under the direction of a person in charge of a non-commercial public library for use of the library if such book is not available for sale in India. So very important. It's not available for sale in India. So if a book is out of print or it's not available for sale in India, then the library can actually make three copies for its use in the library. Very important. This is an exception. So you don't have to go to the publisher to take permission to make three copies of the book and keep it in your library. Very, very important exception for the libraries in India out there. But see that the term non-commercial public library is a very important term to remember. That's why I marked that in red. So library exception three is reproduction for the purpose of research or private study or with a view to publication of an unpublished literary, dramatic, or musical work kept in a library, museum, or other institution to which the public has access. This is available to any library, whether commercial or non-commercial. So if you have an unpublished literary, dramatic, or musical work kept in your library, museum, or other institution, and public has access to it, you are allowed to reproduce this for purpose of research or private study with a view to publication of an unpublished literature. Now, now, in doing all these, you see what happens. We now need to take records that these are laws, but how are they used? So we need to now look at, I will just take two or three examples out there. And those two or three examples which I will take are some of the court cases that, that have taken place. And there are certain judgments which are there, and we can take recourse to those judgments as guidance. But please understand that every case is contextual to that particular case. And therefore, we should not you know, unduly, uh, what I would say, um, extrapolate judgments. We need to understand as they come. And a very famous judgment that, took, you know, that comes from the Delhi High Court, very, very uh, extraordinary judgment. This was called the Chancellors, Masters, and Scholars, Oxford University versus Rameshwari Photocopy Services. Where a very the case, what was the case? The case was that in Delhi University or the Delhi School of Economics, the professors had created a course, they were offering a course, and for that course, they created a course pack where they said that for this particular course, that you will need to take chapters from this book, that book, et cetera, they listed all those chapters and said our students will have to study those chapters. Now, what, what, did, the, the, what did they do? The photocopy shop, the Rameshwari photocopy services, they took these books from the library, they <clears throat> reproduced those particular chapters, put them all in the form of a course pack and sold it at a very reasonable low price to the, to the students who took that particular course. These publishers went and took Rameshwari photocopy services and the Delhi School of Economics to the court, to Delhi High Court, saying that, well, you are infringing our copyright. To cut a long story short, the judge uh, who gave this particular judgment a few years ago in Delhi High Court, said that this falls within the exceptions of the copyright law in India, because it says that this course pack was created in the course of instruction and gave an interpretation of what is the meaning of course of interpretation. And then this, this said, and the judgment, because this is in the construction, this course pack art, of the course, and therefore, this one is not an infringement of the copyright, and therefore, the judgment cleared Rameshwari Photocopy Services and the Delhi School of Economics from any uh, act of infringement. And this has become a landmark judgment in India and is used even today for purposes of doing this part. So, the question that comes in now that if you are making these physical course packs, question is whether 
the digital course packs will will they, will they also follow so we need to look at some of these particular things very very carefully and therefore issues that will come about is as to what is the nature of access what are the nature of controls for limited using of digital course packs only to users who have institutional affiliations etc cetera, etc cetera. so we need to look at all these and here is one very extraordinary judgment that is there in front of us from the delhi high court i will go therefore before making any copies of electronic books one must rely on contracts that they have signed with copyright owners so when you have electronic books have you bought the book is it under license if it is under license then you have to negotiate the license if it is some uh, subscription of books and journals especially with regard to electronic sources then you have to go and see what the exact conditions are so please do not take it for granted that what is true in the physical domain is also true in the case of a digital domain this is important lending borrowing exchanging e copies again are subject to license conditions unlike purchase of hard copies so we need to understand these particular aspects i go to pointers on copyright so allowed to photocopy a book when it is not available for sale in india i have already talked about allowed to preserve by making a digital copy of an available book yes allowed to making works available in format accessible to persons with disability yes communicating orphan works yes involvement of an exercise of educational exceptions yes publicizing available works in library yes so these are some of the aspects of copyright in now i move from here to a new development that has taken place over the years and the new development that has taken place over the years is parallel to the copyright system another system has also evolved also it's a copyright part but this is the concept of what is known as creative commons now in the case of creative commons that there are different sides so creative commons license is the heart of what is known as the open educational resource movement what does it say it says we want to do everything very legally we do not want to infringe copyright therefore it says we will start a system of you know creative commons where we will ask the authors themselves to come and declare how you want to work to be used rather than somebody else sir we we couldn't hear you ganguly sir participants kindly wait i will uh, just check with ganguly sir if he is uh, having some connectivity issue so kindly wait uh, professor kanguli i think he is having some connectivity issue he will join shortly
kindly wait i think uh, professor ganguly's internet has uh, some connectivity problem he is trying to reconnect uh, in a minute or so kindly wait so participants uh, professor ganguly is uh, trying to join from his mobile phone he will be uh, answering the question and answer shortly because i think he is not able to connect through the wifi modem so he will be joining from his uh, mobile phone shortly so kindly wait we have already received few questions uh, uh, from the participants i have already taken note of them so i will just put it in the put it for professor ganguly to respond to these questions so i have taken question from uh, ms priti uh, from mr sangu bilas archana dangwal mafreen sidwa uh, mr sumit kumar mukherji ms sapna ms reena and mr ullas so we have received uh, the questions from these people so once we uh, once professor ganguly comes back we will uh, put the questions so as uh, i said we will share the feedback form url at the end of the session so kindly uh, bear with us for a few more minutes so welcome back sir yeah can you am i uh, and is the screen uh, seen or no I sir i have to reshare the screen right yes sir you you have to reshare the screen yeah i am resharing the screen yeah now it has started coming sorry the, uh, the internet gone away am i back on the screen the screen is loading yes you are is back is the screen visible yes now it is visible sir the screen is visible yes i'm so sorry i must apologize for uh technical fault uh there's it's raining very heavily outside maybe that's the reason the internet uh went off but nevertheless uh let's carry on i will just also switch off the video yeah so it's okay is it am i audible now yes sir you are you are audible okay so So as I was, uh, you know, saying, 
that this system called the creative commons has come about saying that, well, let us now create a system which is parallel to the copyright system. It does not challenge the copyright system. And it says, let's simply, you know, keep the copyright system of the work decide how his or her work is to be used by others. So when they access it, what all can they do? And what this slide tells you is under this aspect where it says, see cut, it says it, that's not in the public domain. Whereas when you look at the others that CCBY, CCBYSA, CCBYND, CCBYNC, CCBYNCSA and this, all these are different classifications that are given under the Creative Commons and the author can decide how the author wants his or her work to be utilized by the public out there. And therefore, in all these things, very important part is attribution. I mean, you must definitely give reference. You must definitely who is using the, you know, who was the creator of the work, you must say. And whatever you are going to do, whether you have to copy, publish, you know, some allows you commercial use, some code, you have to look at, therefore, under each of the works, you should look at what is given under this copyright part into it. And therefore, you should be able to. For example, this presentation which I'm making, which will appear, I will make these slides av available to you completely, you know, where I will say that you will be able to access, you must give attribution to me. You will not use it for commercial use. Yeah, you can modify adapt and you can change the license. So I will give it to you most probably by BYNCSA out there, okay? Or I may even give it to you by CCBYSA where you can modify adapt but you can use it for commercial use out there. So it will depend on me how I will give these options or how I will how I'll make it available to you out there. So now let's go further. And uh, since we lost a lot of time, we now therefore come to this concept, which is now prevalent called open educational resources. And therefore UNESCO, which is the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, it has now come under that it has, it has created this concept called Open Educational Resource, OER, where it says these are teaching, learning, research materials in any medium, digital or otherwise, that resides in the public domain or have been released under an open license that permits no cost access, no cost access, no cost use, no cost adaptation, and no cost redistribution to others with no or limited restrictions. And after that came about in 2012, came in what is known as the Paris OER declaration. And then that was followed by what is known as the Ljubljana OER uh, action plan 2017. And what does that do? That is based on outputs of regional consultations and it identifies concrete actions to mainstream OER to achieve the you know, SGD4 goals, the UN goals on quality education. So, so, so now you can see the world is moving towards the system saying, well, let there be copyright, but then can we come up more creative ways of doing ways so that we can balance the whole process where the creators of the work get whatever the credits they need to get, the creators of the work and the publishers can earn what they need to earn you know, reasonably for sustainability and yet make things available, accessible and for reuse uh, or repurposing, you know, in a balanced manner so that everybody, everyone goes into a win-win situation. Now in the paucity of time, since we lost a certain amount of time, I will go straight away into the last part of my talk. And so what we have done from the National Digital Library of India, we have created a copyright guide based on, based on 
the uh, copyright law in India and NDLI is going to launch this copyright guide shortly within a couple of weeks out there. And this will be made available free to everyone under a Creative Commons license so that NDLI will make this copyright guide available. So each one of you can actually use the copyright guide, you know, but obviously what you have to understand is that this copyright guide is to be used, but for every specific case that comes about, you need to have a legal consultation while doing that particular thing. But the copyright guide will give you general guidelines of how to use the Copyright Act in India, specifically for the Indian Copyright Act and for librarians in India. Having said that, the table of contents are given in front of you. So we have tried to make it as simple as possible. And this should be made available to you at the NDLI site shortly in a couple of weeks time. And NDLI is trying its best to make it available to you as soon as possible. Now, I will, uh, so, so, so on to this, I just want to come as to what are some of the emerging issues in addition to what we have already spoken. And some of the emerging issues that are coming in, one is artificial intelligence and infusion of autonomous artificial intelligence into, into uh, creating different types of work. And there was a subtle transition to machines with human-like attributes. And there was a question that are being asked, uh, when these machines or when these AI systems, let me not call them machines, let me say these autonomous artificial intelligence systems create some expressions, create some works, who will own the copyright is an open question. And this is something that we need to think. And that is going to raise a lot of questions as to who will be the owner of those works. Will there be any copyright to those works? Who will own those copyrights? If a copyright laws will have to be rethought about in the domain of artificial intelligence as we go along. So this is something and that will open up a host of new questions on issues vis-a-vis -vis distance learning, library digitization, because artificial intelligence is going to bring a completely new dimension in the entire process of operations. So with this, it is now uh, 7.25 and we can have a few questions. So I will stop at this stage uh, since we lost a bit of time in due to technical reasons, I will stop at this stage and open it up for questions. Thank you. So thank you so much for this uh, like very insightful presentation. So I have already uh, got uh, more than 10 questions. I will uh, just put it uh, for you to respond. The yes, first please. question is from uh, Ms. Preeti Chauhan. Her question is, uh, suppose we purchase a book in our library. The link of that book is available on the website. Can we share the link of that uh, in our software? Say, for example, she is using uh, Koha software. Can we use the links while customization of Koha in user interface? Can we use these books to create our virtual library or web page? If these resources are used by the name of school, how far is it safe to, for copyright uh, violation? The first thing that you have to do is that if this link is available, you have to go and see, have they put any conditions on reuse of that particular link? If they have put some conditions, then so the main, the short answer to this is that you will have to go to that link and see any conditions that have been put on the link. If there are no conditions put on the link, then it is always safer to check with them that, look, I want to do this and, uh, you know, do I have the permission to do it? Then go and do it. Don't do it arbitrarily. Sure, sir. So the next question is from uh, uh, Mr. Songu Bilas. What is the difference between copyright and plagiarism? Kindly explain. Excellent question. See, copyright is a matter of law. Copyright is a matter of law. It's a legal issue. Plagiarism is not a legal issue. Plagiarism is an ethical issue. So what is the difference between the two? Plagiarism is when I take something that was written by you or created by you, and I pass it off as my work. I don't put your name. I put my name in your work and pass it off as my work. And I do not recognize, and nobody recognizes, nobody, you know, 
that means that means I take your work and pass it off as my work. So that is an ethical issue. Therefore, it is not a copyright issue, but it is an ethical issue. Therefore, it is not a legal issue; it is an ethical issue. Sure, sir. So the next question is uh, from uh, Miss Archana Dangwal. Her question is: If I scan a book and make a PDF, can I share it with my students to read? Will that be a copyright violation? Now, the interesting part, as I said right in the beginning, the question is whether it's a part. That means you know it's a tricky one. I can make a PDF, and now the question comes in when I give it to my students. The question is. who has access to it if i extend i may like to extend the um, you know the thing that it is a part of my course it's a part of my course work and therefore if my students have access to this not in general terms but if they have access to it with their passwords and everything then i may get away by saying i have used it for my educational purposes and not in a general sense of the term Okay, so the next question is from uh, Mafreen Sidwa. What are your thoughts on payment of royalty, and uh, oh. are we on par with international standards? The royalty is something that is always negotiated, right? So, so what happens in case of royalty? Somebody will ask for X, and you will negotiate a royalty. So it will all depend on how you negotiate. So yes, there are international norms. but you will have to begin you have to learn how to negotiate your royalty terms sure so next question is from mr sumit kumar mogachi i think this is also a similar question like a earlier question the question is many ebook sites are easily available on the internet if anyone download and make use of these for educational purposes not commercially is it also a part of copyright violation if if yes then how all those ebook sites freely scattered uh, Uh, see if you go to each of those ebooks you must first go and see what are the conditions under which that ebook was made available so it's extremely important for us to always go and do a bit of due diligence that under what conditions that was put there under what conditions you are allowed to download it under what condition that is why you see what has happened is because it is getting complex But for every one of them, you need to go and see, and sometimes they are put, sometimes they are not put. That is why now what is happening is people are coming with systems called the rights statements, you know, uh, things like Creative Commons, saying that well, with each of the works, please put down what somebody can do with it or what one cannot cannot do with it. Therefore, with these e-books that are available, one has to go. and do a bit of due diligence and see what are the conditions and the which that ebook was put up there and what were the conditions for downloading it is only then that you will be able to give an answer to what you can do with it or what you ought not to do with it sure sir so the next question is from miss uh, sapna dave and her question is does private school library falls under commercial or non commercial purpose it's very interesting question because it is very interesting and i am happy that you have asked this question that you see in unfortunately our indian copyright act has not clarified this particular point as to what is the definition of a non commercial public library now i think uh, you know we have written already to the government and i would urge all the people attending this particular thing that they should actually make a representation to the government and now that we are amending the copyright act or we are at least thinking of amending the copyright the copyright act should come with a clarification on this particular point as to whether you know what comes under the definition of a non commercial public library because this is something which is not defined and therefore it has been left open to some interpretation out there so i would urge people to write to the government to seek a clarification at least in the amended copyright act sure sir so the next question is from uh, miss uh, reena santra and her question is where does newspaper stand in the creative commons uh, license part are they can be shared through facebook or whatsapp 
Oh, sorry, can you repeat the question again, please? I didn't quite get it. So, where do the newspapers stand in terms of uh, copyright? Correct. Now, see, if you take, for example, Times of India or Hindustan Times or any of these, you will see at some place in the newspaper, they put a copyright. Okay. Now, in that particular part, what you will understand is the, the, the news content, the news part is not covered under copyright. The way they have expressed it is covered under copyright. So, if you're conveying the news, then it will not infringe. But if you're conveying their entire report the way it is, that is a part of their copyright. So it comes, the news paper is coming under copyright, but the news does not come under copyright. Go ahead. Hello. 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 Am I am I audible? Am I audible? Hello. Is it got disconnected again? Yes, sir. No, there is a technical problem at my end. Oh, at least. Oh. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. I thought. I thought I got knocked out. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Am I audible now? Hello, I'm audible now. Can you hear me? Uh, but uh, they are out now. Hello, am I audible?
ഓടാട്ടാവും നിൽക്കും I'm extremely sorry for this uh, inconvenience participants my uh, internet gone off uh, there is a heavy rain at my uh, hometown so i'm i got logged off sorry i'm now uh, sir are you there sir Professor yes Gangli, i'm sir? very much there please carry on sorry sir sorry about this uh, not to worry please carry on so the next question is from uh, uh, mr ullas those reading materials which are freely available online Uh, can it share to anyone or is it it comes under uh, copyright no see anything comes under copyright okay because please understand in case of copyright as soon as you have created the work it becomes your copyright copyright law does not say that you have to register a copyright okay so as soon as you have created your work it becomes your copyright however however as i said for every place you have to go and see that what were the conditions under which it was shared and then you can go and share okay sure sir so the next question is from uh, um, dr jay prakash her this question is how do we cite the pictures from the google how do you cite a picture oh, taken so from first, first of course you know you will find that many of the pictures that are given there will uh, say that this is copyrighted and it may tell you that use of those particular pictures are uh, subject to copyright so if it is subject to copyright you must find out who owns the copyright and take permission of that so that is the first part now so 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 it is it's so it's the same standard principle right if someone owns the copyright it does not mean that just because it's in google it means it's in public domain it means it is in public domain but it is not out of necessarily out of copyright okay so you have sure. to be very careful while putting for example suppose i take and in my slide i put the picture of a coca cola bottle right out there so you know that was in public domain but then coca cola may come and tell me Oh, but that's my copyright. But so be very careful for what purpose are you using, when you are using. You know, all those aspects must come into the play. That is the reason whenever we write books, articles, you know, the copy that you will find, the publisher always sends you a note saying that whichever diagrams you have put in your chapter or in your book, the publisher will come and ask you, have you taken a copyright clearance for that? if you tell it was available in google and i picked it up and put it there that is not a sufficient proper answer you have to tell whether you have taken permission or you have not taken permission or whether you need to take permission okay sure so then uh, cbsc ahead. board uh, cbsc board publishes lot of books Yes. Uh, that uh, are taking print out of these files been because they are not available in the open market and giving it to the students for free uh, to read uh, those materials will it come under copyright uh, violation in, in principle yes but what cbs must have done is must have taken permission otherwise i do not expect them to do that so freely they must have taken sure. permission to do so Sure. The next question is from Mr. Vishal Gupta. What is the difference between intellectual property and copyright? No, copyright is a part of an intellectual property. See, intellectual property. When you say intellectual property rights, intellectual property rights has patent, trademark, copyright, design registration, geographical indication. All these is a part of intellectual property rights. Copyright is one. a aspect of intellectual property right so when you say intellectual property right is the general term which has all this copyright is a specific law under the intellectual property rights sure so there is a question from professor advocate hariharan he is asking what is the expansion of uh, by nc nd sa etc okay i will then go to the slide i will one minute let me just go to my slide so that it becomes easier uh yeah 
Is the slide visible? Yes, sir. Okay. Now you will see on this slide where I've put, you know, where I've simply, now you can see here, you, you, you can copy that website, that website I put from where I got that particular bit. You can see that CCBY. What CCBY means is that you can copy and publish, but you must give attribution, which means you must tell who is the author or owner of this particular copyright. You can put it to commercial use. You can modify it and adapt. You can change the license. What CCBY essay means is that you can copy, publish. You can you have to give attribution. You can use it for commercial purposes. You can modify and adapt, but you cannot change the license condition of your work. If you take CCBY ND is written on a work, then you can copy, publish. You can uh, you have to give attribution. You can do commercial use. You cannot modify or adapt. You can change the license of your work. If you have CC, NY, NC, then what it means is that you can copy, publish. You must give attribution. You cannot put to commercial use. You can modify, adapt. You can this condition for whatever work you are creating. If it is CC, BY, NC, SA, then you can copy, publish. You can do the attribution as you know, you must do attribution. You cannot put to commercial use. You can modify or adapt, but you cannot change the license. When you come to CC, BY, NC, ND, then you can copy, publish. You can, uh, at, you know, you must give attribution. You cannot put to commercial use. You cannot modify or adapt, and, but you can change the license of the work that you create. So this is the meaning of these particular attributions, uh, of, sorry, these particular notifications. I sure, hope sir. I've answered the question. Sure, sir, sure. So one last question that I'm going to pick up is from uh, Mr. Krishna, Krishna Nand Singh. Uh, he's uh, saying, suppose if I have subscribed an e-newspaper, e can I share it with my students and other faculty members? Now, when you take an e-newspaper, it's a good question. See, again, when you subscribe, you must go and read the conditions of your subscription. Generally, they will tell you that you will not be allowed to share. Now, it will depend that if you are using part of it for your coursework, then that much part you are selectively taking out and saying, I'm going to use it for my course, and therefore I am giving it to my students. So you have to go and see the conditions under which you are subscribing to that e-newspaper. Sure, sir. So we thank you so much for uh, taking out uh, time from your busy schedule and uh, being with us. Uh, we, I think uh, I'm, uh, most of our uh, participants will agree that uh, they enjoyed uh, this session very much. And we uh, really thank you from the heart of uh, our heart. And then uh, if we have any questions, we will uh, ask the participants to write to you directly and uh, you may want to respond to them. So we once again, and thank I will you. share with you my presentation and we will, I will also in the presentation right in the beginning, I will put down in the cover slide uh, the, the creative commons under which we'll be giving these slides. So our participants can use the slides under the Creative Commons. Okay? Sure, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very With much. This, we are uh, going and to... And for me, this is a great pleasure and privilege to be a part of the Panikar Foundation and the celebration of the 25th uh, you know, session on this. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your time. So, uh, participants, I just have a couple of housekeeping announcement uh, for this session. Uh, I'm going to share the feedback form URL in the chat box so before you submit your feedback form kindly ensure that you have registered for this uh, webinar so i'm going to share with you the feedback for registration form url and the feedback form url in the chat box so that you can uh, submit your first register yourself and then submit the feedback form and uh, tomorrow we have a, a session on uh, using technologies to achieve inclusive education that's going to be from uh, evening 5 pm to 6 pm and uh, uh, Mr. Kannan Anfons Kanantana, former uh, uh, Union Minister for uh, Culture, uh, he is going to be uh, speaking on this uh, important topic. And you can uh, join this session uh, using uh, 
uh, you can register for this session uh, in the url that i'm going to share it uh, very shortly and you can also see all the upcoming url webinars uh, in this uh, url so uh, with this also like kindly i request each one of you to install the ndli mobile app in your mobile phone so that you can have access to over 5.2 crore open source knowledge resources that you can use uh, for your educational research and uh, uh, knowledge uh, sharing purposes so with this we are uh, going to end this session now and if you have uh, any uh, further question you can put it in the chat box i would be happy to respond so once again thank you so much sir for uh, being with us uh, for today's session thank you thank you very much my pleasure thank you sir. so for our youtube audience i'm going to put it uh, i'm going to share this uh, so kindly wait for few minutes uh, still i uh, do that thank you